Welcome to the channel, you guys. You are watching a free full course on how to make a modular first person and third person controller in Unity. I'm not here to waste time. I'm here to get things done. So before we dive in, here's a quick demo of every single feature we're gonna be adding so you can know if this is the right tutorial for you. I hope that inspired you a little bit. Let me just give a quick rundown of what all this is. Now at this point, I know your time is valuable. I know a lot of people will just go ahead and skip the intro, but hear me out for just a sec. Let me just give some advice on how to make the most of your time here. I will be providing the entire project at the end completely for free. So if you're somebody who just wants to download the project and experiment around, I hear you, I support you. I will have a demo video that helps you do that at the end. But please remember, I have spent over 100 hours on this series. I'm releasing this for free. So if you guys are gonna download the source code, just please help me out. Give this video a like, subscribe, and consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. And as of right now, I actually only have one Patreon member and two YouTube members. Shout out to them. Now, for those of you who want to learn a ton about C Sharp, Unity, and player controller development, I would highly recommend watching this series and trying to recreate what I do as you go. If you ever have any bugs that you can't figure out, I will have the source code uploaded for each part, so you can always just download that at the end and pick up where we left off in the next part. If you guys have any questions or feedback, drop a comment below. And with that, let's start this game dev journey. I know some of you are just starting out in Unity, so I'm going to start a project from complete scratch so you can follow every step. Open up a new project and we're going to choose 3D URP because if you're making a game in 2024 or later, most likely you'll want to use URP instead of HDRP or the built-in render pipeline. Okay, we're here in our blank project and the first thing we're going to do is import some packages that we'll be using. If you go to the Unity registry tab, you can find the input system package. Go ahead and install that. Now this is referred to as Unity's new input system. It's extremely versatile and allows for very easy setups of multiple inputs and key bindings, like support for both mouse keyboard and controller inputs at the same time. After you import it, you should see it in your packages inside of your project. We're also gonna get a free asset pack from Unity named Free Low Poly Human RPG Character. I'll link this in the description, but you're just gonna have to add it from this page, then open it in Unity. Navigate to the package manager, my assets, and install and import it. So now we have a bunch of animations and models to use for our character controller. And if we go into the characters folder, we can drag this human male prefab into the scene, which is in a standard T pose. There is a problem though, all of the textures are pink. That's because the materials are meant for the built in render pipeline, but we made a URP project. There's a really easy fix for this. Just go up to window rendering and then render pipeline converter. All we gotta do is check the material upgrade box, then initialize and convert it at the bottom, and there we go. Okay, we got this cool low poly character, and I'm gonna unpack the prefab completely so that we can make our own prefab, and then let's call this a uh, first person controller. Um, before we go any further though, I'm thinking it, you're thinking it, 
Do we really want to work on this dude who looks naked? Uh, how about we give him a dark gray tone for his shorts instead? Open up this asset, find the underwear game object, and let's change the shader color to dark gray. All right, hopefully now I don't get banned by YouTube. So remember, I named this guy first person controller, but we're gonna be making both a first and third person controller in this series. So don't worry if you want a third person controller, we're gonna get to that really soon. Let's go ahead and make a folder where we're gonna put all of our assets for this player controller. I'm gonna name the folder Ginja Gaming. That's our studio's name. You can name it whatever you want if you want something different. Then let's make a folder named Final Character Controller. We can make a prefabs folder and then drag this first person controller into the prefabs. Okay, we have our character, but he needs something to stand on. I'm gonna install the package Pro Builder because it gives us a lot of different shapes that we can test out our movement on. Install Pro Builder and also don't forget to click on this samples tab here and install the URP support files. So now I'm gonna grab this Pro Builder window and create a plain shape for our character to stand on. Also, let me just swap this out to a green checkered texture so that we don't have to work with a blinding white background. Okay, I know that was quite a bit of setup, but we can finally get started with some of the important stuff now. Let's start by making our input system. Create a new folder under final character controller named input. Then inside that folder, create new input actions, which is all the way at the bottom of the list. Name it player controls, double click it to open it up. And now what we have are a few different menus. So on the left side, we have action maps, which you can think of this as a set of actions. The first set of actions that we're gonna make have to do with player movement or more formally known as player locomotion. So we're gonna name this player locomotion map. Now in the next menu, we have our specific actions. These are actions like jump or WASD movement. So let's change some settings on our first action. I'm gonna choose value for action type and vector two for control type. Then let's name our action movement. Now there's a convenient feature built in here that allows us for movement input. So if you click the plus icon, we can create an up, down, left, right binding. I'll name this one WASD. And you can now see that there's four different bindings for our movement keys. We can assign our movement keys to each one by selecting path and then typing the key that we want. And for whatever reason, I have to confirm with right click here, which is kind of odd. So, um, you know, I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same for you guys, but if left click doesn't work, use right click here. Let's do that for the rest of our keys. And now comes something that is extremely important and the most compelling reason for us to use this new input system. We can create a new set of actions for movement like before, but we can assign this to the gamepad to add controller support. I'll name this left stick, which is how we move with most controllers. Then for each of these actions, just select the corresponding gamepad direction. All right, awesome. So now we have keyboard mouse and controller input ready to go. Go ahead and click exit and save. Navigate to your player controls. So the next thing that we're gonna do is generate a C-sharp file so that we can access these inputs using code. I'm also gonna do something a little extra here for organizational purposes, but this is optional. Under the C-sharp class namespace, I'm gonna enter the namespace ginjagaming.finalcharactercontroller. If you don't understand namespaces, don't worry. Just think of them as like an extra folder for your code, much like a folder would work on your computer. Now we can just click apply and it will generate the C-sharp file for us. And you can actually see at the top of this file, it correctly included the namespace that we entered. Next, let's create a scripts folder and create a new C-sharp file named player controller. I'm also gonna create one specifically for our locomotion input named player locomotion input. Go ahead and add both of these scripts to your prefab in the scene. And just a quick note, if you wanna update your prefab in the hierarchy, click on this overrides button and apply all to apply any changes that you've made. So now we get to one of the most controversial subjects in Unity game development. What type of player controller are we gonna make? I don't wanna waste too much time here, so here's a table of pros and cons for each. You guys can pause and read through them if you want, but I wanna keep moving. So what are we gonna use? Well, I think character controller is more universal and easier to perfect, so let's use that one. So we've added the character controller component and you can see things like slope limit and step offset. Those are gonna be really helpful for handling slopes. It also has a built-in collider for collider detection. 
We can see at the moment the collider is way too low though, so let's change the center along Y to 1. Let's fine tune it a bit. I'm going to make the height 1.8 and then let's sh actually shift the center down to 0.9 to fit this model and then make the radius a bit smaller, something like 0.35 or maybe 0.3. Let's now take our main camera and drag it inside the prefab. Currently, there's a pretty big offset, so I'm going to zero this out so it's near the player's feet then just drag this along the Y axis until it's up near our player's eyes. There's also this gizmos on off button if you get annoyed with all the gizmos. So now we can see its position a little more precisely. Okay, and now at this point, we are actually ready to start some scripting. Double click player locomotion input to open it on up. So the very first thing we're gonna do is add in our namespace to the file. Again, this isn't required, but since I wanna publish this asset for you guys, it's important I do this so there aren't any conflicting file names when people import it. So we created a namespace using the same path as our file structure. We need to initialize our player controls input. So make a public player controls property named player controls. Now I wanna stop here again real quick and explain a couple things. You'll notice first that this variable has getter and setter methods. This makes it a class property instead of a field. The recommended c -sharp syntax for properties is that you use Pascal case or that we capitalize the first letter. This makes it a little bit weird because our class and our property have the exact same name, but this is actually a supported feature in c -sharp, and it's even recommended or encouraged to do this if it makes the most sense, which it does here. Now, why am I using a property over just a regular field? I'm gonna want to access or get this variable from outside of the class, but I don't want anybody to be able to change this variable from outside of the class. Thus, I've used the private set syntax here, which won't allow us to set its value from outside of the class. It really is that simple. If it didn't make sense to you, don't worry. Using a property here is not necessary. It's just more organizationally correct. If you don't wanna use a property, by all means, just use a public field instead. We're also gonna add in another property of type vector2 named movement input. The next thing we're adding here is an interface to our class. So remember when we generated that C sharp class for our input? Well, that actually generated an interface for us, which we can add to this class by typing player controls.i, which stands for interface, player locomotion map actions. There's a red line under this right now because when we add an interface, we need to implement a specific set of methods for that interface. In Visual Studio, you can automatically generate this method, which is what I'm gonna do here. And now we have our onMovement method, which gets called when one of our inputs is used. It will only get called if we enable it though. So let's add the onEnable method and inside of here, we're gonna enable our player controls. Then below that, we're gonna specifically enable our player locomotion map that we set up and set callbacks to this class. Let's also add the onDisable method so that we can properly disable and remove callbacks when it's not being used. Okay, down in the onMovement method now, we just have one simple line of code to actually add here, which is we just set our movement input to the vector2 output. Just to show you guys what this is doing, let's now print out the movement input and test it out. Let's press play and now I'm pressing different buttons on WASD and you can see in the bottom left, or maybe I'll just bring the console up here, uh, we're printing out different directions in a vector2 format. So now we can use this to control our player's movement. One ad little additional tip, if you notice when I press play, there's a little bit of lag. We can actually get rid of this by going to edit project settings editor, then check enter play mode options. Now you can see when I press play, there's actually no lag at all. Just a little quick tip there. Let's finally make our player respond to the input and movement. Open up the player controller script, then let's add our namespace again real quick and delete our start and update methods for now. Our player controller script is going to be our main point of entry into the player controller. So let's serialize our character controller in our camera. In terms of syntax, I'm using an underscore to denote that this is a member field, which is the recommended syntax for C sharp, but in Unity, a lot of people also use the M underscore syntax. Also, if you don't want to use either one of these because you just hate underscores, I totally get that, and you really you don't have to use them. I just am explaining my process to you guys so it doesn't seem like I'm doing it for no reason. Let's set up some movement settings. 
add in run acceleration and run speed. I'll just give a couple quick starting values here. We can fine tune these later. Let's also get an instance of our player locomotion class. And on awake, let's set our player locomotion instance. And that's all we need to do because we'll set up our character controller and camera in the editor. We're finally getting to the exciting part. So let's program in our first movement code. I'm gonna create a vector three for both the camera forward direction and the camera right direction, but actually projected into the XZ plane. The reason for this is I want the movement to be based off of the current camera direction. So now we can create a vector three named movement direction, and we multiply the camera's current facing direction with our movement input. What this is gonna do is if I press W for forward, we'll walk in the direction our camera's facing. If we press D or right, we walk in the direction 90 degrees to the right of the camera's facing direction. Now we'll calculate our movement delta, which is how much our player moves this frame. Our movement delta is given by the movement direction times our run acceleration times time dot delta time. Finally, we calculate our new velocity as our character controller's current velocity plus our movement delta. So why am I multiplying acceleration by time dot delta time here, but not the speed? Well, that's due to our kinematic equations from physics. We see that the position is determined as velocity times time plus acceleration times time squared, so we have to apply time dot delta time twice for any accelerations. I'll do it here once and then again at the end when I call our move function. To physically move the player in the scene, we have to call character controller dot move. And it's extremely important that we multiply by time dot delta time here to normalize for our current frames per second rate. I'm also putting this note in here. Unity suggests that we only ever call this once per frame. Otherwise, some very odd interactions can start to happen. Okay, let's test out our controller, but first make sure you hook up the character controller and camera components. And I'm gonna just set the run acceleration to about 50 actually. Also, make sure that your player isn't touching the surface uh, for now, just otherwise it's gonna collide and do some weird things. So just move it up a little bit. You'll notice a few things. One, our player is moving extremely fast and also it's just sliding infinitely. So let's fix these two things. Go back into your script and add in a public float drag in our update function, let's set our current drag to our velocity's current direction times the drag times time dot delta time. And remember, because drag is an acceleration, we need to apply it twice, like I talked about earlier, once here and then once in the move function after we add everything up. Then let's add this to our new velocity by using a ternary operator. If you don't know what a ternary operator is, I do have a video on this that I'll link below, but the following code just reads like this. It's pretty simple. If our new velocity's magnitude is greater than our drag, subtract our drag from our new velocity. Otherwise, or else, set our new velocity to zero. We're doing this this way because it prevents the drag from actually sending us backwards if our velocity were to be too low. Save that, I'm gonna set my drag speed to 30 for now and let's test it out. All right, so we actually, we have another bug here. I'm gonna try to move to the right, but I can't. This is really a subtle and frustrating bug that I came across, but it's, it's actually because our movement per frame is too small right now, and we need to adjust uh, a character controller setting. So set your character controller's minimum move distance to something like really small, like 1e minus 5, and then let's test again. And now you can see uh, we're slowing down due to the drag force and everything else is working. There's still a big issue though, which is we can infinitely accelerate and just zoom across the map. We need to make sure that when we're accelerating, we can't go faster than our run speed. Let's head back into our player controller script and add in just one new line, which is um, we're going to set this new velocity to a clamped value using the clamp magnitude function, where the second argument is our clamp value. And back in Unity, now you can see that our player is moving around at a reasonable speed and it gets clamped to our run speed value. Okay, so the next thing that we need to add in is camera movement. We need another input action for this, so let's open up player controls and under actions, we'll add an action named look. Let's set the action type to value, control type to vector two, and the binding path to delta mouse. What this is gonna do is call our on look function and pass in how much our mouse moved in a given frame. Now you'll see in your console, you have an error when you save this, 
You can actually just double click this to navigate to the error. It's basically just telling us that we haven't implemented our player locomotion maps interface again, which makes sense because we just added a new function for it. So we can just auto implement this feature in Visual Studio again, and the function appears at the bottom. Okay, we need to store our mouse delta's value. So let's create a vector to property named look input. Then we'll go into our on look function and set the look input to the value passed in as a vector two. Now I'm gonna add one more thing here at the top of the script, which is a bit of a controversial topic, but I'm gonna change the default execution order to minus two so that this script always runs before our other ones. That's just because for each frame, the first thing I wanna check is our input values. Then after that, we'll do something with them in other classes. Here I'm setting it to minus two because I actually wanna do this as well for our player controller class, except I want the input class to run right before it. So then we can just set the execution order to minus one for our player controller class. We wanna be able to customize our look sensitivity. So let's add in both a public float look sense H and a look sense V. And now that we're getting more and more parameters here, I'm gonna do a bit of code organization. So I'll create some headers like camera settings, base movement and components. Then if you look back in Unity, you can now see these headers in the editor. So just a bit more organization there. I'm gonna make one more camera setting, which is our look limit V, because I wanna clamp how high or low of an angle that you can look so that you don't spin around vertically in a weird way. Then let's create a vector two to store our current camera rotation and another vector two called player target rotation because we're gonna need both our camera and our player to rotate if we're gonna animate it properly. So we're about to implement our camera logic and it's usually recommended to do all the camera rotation after all the movement logic. So we're gonna put this in our built-in late update function for mono behaviors. The first thing that we do here is add to our camera's X rotation by our look sense horizontal times our look input dot X. For our camera Y rotation, we're gonna wanna clamp this value with our look limit. So use mathf.clamp, then we're gonna take our current camera Y rotation and subtract the look sense vertical times our look input Y. Then the last two arguments are our negative and positive clamp values, which we set using the look limit V. This will make it so that we can't look above or below our look limit along our Y rotation axis. Then we basically do the same thing with our player's target rotation as we did with the camera, but we only need to do it for the X rotation. Then for now, we can just set our player's rotation to the X component of the target rotation, but we're gonna change this up a little bit later on in the tutorials so that our player has a fixed rotation speed. So that's why I'm doing this here. Finally, we also set the actual camera transforms rotation to the proper value. Let's test this out. So back in play mode, you can see everything is working properly. Our camera is looking around, our player is turning, and our input actions are moving us in the correct direction, whether I press forward or sideways. Before we go any further, I want to show you guys how to easily turn this into a third person controller, and then we can swap between the two if we want. Let's apply our changes to the first person controller and save it. Then let's unpack this prefab completely. Now I'm gonna rename this to third person controller and drag it into our prefabs folder. In order to do this in the easiest possible way, we're gonna use something called Cinemachine. So open up your package manager and under the Unity registry, find Cinemachine and install it. This might seem a little bit weird, but just bear with me. Duplicate your main camera, go back to the original main camera and set the tag to untagged. Then put your new main camera inside your old one. Next, we're gonna make a virtual camera from the Cinemachine menu. Cinemachine has now identified our main camera one as our Cinemachine virtual camera, which is what we wanted. Now I'm gonna name our original camera back to dummy camera because we're basically just gonna use it as a dummy game object for our current look direction. Then let me just rename our new camera back to uh, main camera. Now go to your dummy camera and disable the camera component. And also you're gonna wanna disable the audio listener all the way at the bottom, but I, I forgot to do it. I do it a little later on. So then click on the virtual camera and this is where we're gonna change all of our third person settings for the camera. Our camera needs a follow target. So I'm gonna choose our dummy camera since I want to focus near the player's head. We'll also use the dummy camera for the look at transform. Cinemachine is great because it has a bunch of built-in features and customization, so let's go to the body and change from transposer to third-person follow. Some default settings have now been applied for us, which you can see uh, in action here, but I personally don't like these very much. Let's increase the damping for X and Y, which will make it appear to be smoother. 
Then I'm gonna get rid of the X offset for the shoulder offset so our camera is straight behind our player and not off to the side. Then also go into aim and go down to something like 0.1 or 0.2 on your vertical and horizontal damping. That's gonna keep the player much more centered and things won't be swinging around as crazy. This is definitely looking a little bit better to me. Uh, feel free to play around with some of these settings. So for example, we can increase our FOV a little bit. I kind of prefer this. And now let's go back in play mode and you can see that we actually we have a little bit of an issue. Our camera suddenly jumps around when we move directly above our player. So to prevent this, we can just change the look limit V to something like 75 or maybe 70. And now you can see it's not doing it anymore. And at this point, we have reached the end of video one. So I'm gonna actually go into a demo and just show you guys what we've created. One thing I will note is the camera is gonna feel pretty jittery right now. I promise that is something we're gonna be fixing later on, but I'm just gonna keep this for now. So we have a player model who can move forward, backwards and sideways. Our camera looks around correctly and we have separate prefabs for both a first person and a third person controller. In the next tutorial, we're going to be getting into animations, blend trees, and adding more states like idling and sprinting. If you guys are enjoying this series, please drop a like and a comment. And also feel free to join my Discord if you want to chat about game dev. That's going to do it for this one. Peace!